Welcome to the Digital Detectives. I'm your host, Amara Johnson. And I'm Marcus Chen. Before we dive in, we should mention that we're fictional podcast hosts created for your entertainment and education. But the information we're sharing today is very real and potentially very concerning. That's right. Today we're tackling a topic that's been hiding in plain sight on your computer screen. Shadow IT lurking in your browser tabs. Did you know that browser-based shadow IT is responsible for roughly 35% of corporate data breaches? That's more than a third. And what's really concerning is that most IT departments don't even know it's happening. Here's the thing. Your browser has become the new frontier for shadow IT. And it's time we shine a light on this growing blind spot. But first, a quick reminder about our live Q&A session happening next week. We'll be answering your burning questions about all things cybersecurity. So make sure you submit them through our community forum. Now let's break down what we mean by browser-based shadow IT. Essentially, it's any unauthorized software, extensions, or web applications that employees access through their browsers without IT approval or oversight. Let me put a face to this problem. Meet Tom, a project coordinator at an IT firm who's constantly racing against tight deadlines. To help himself work faster, Tom installs a free AI-powered writing assistant as a Chrome extension. The extension helps him write better and faster, but it never gets registered in the company's IT asset repository. Then Tom adds more tools, project management assistants that sync with Google Docs, productivity trackers, you name it. And here's where it gets scary. These tools are automatically saving sensitive company data, including client names and internal project timelines to third-party servers. That's a major compliance breach. And the IT department has absolutely no idea this is happening. What makes this particularly dangerous is that these cloud-based applications bypass the device's firewall and security measures. Plus, Tom's credentials are stored in tools that don't require multi-factor authentication. Fast forward a month, and Tom's in serious trouble. The AI assistant suffers a security breach, and all that sensitive company data is potentially exposed. Tom's job is now at risk all because of shadow IT hiding in his browser. We actually spoke with Tony Mendez, a lead technology specialist at Canon Business Process Services, who's seen this pattern play out numerous times. Tony told us, and I quote, people want to go outside of the process. They have meetings in their departments, identify a need, find a solution, and just go ahead and buy software to be successful in front of their managers. And the first moment they have a problem, they call IT to try to fix it. This perfectly illustrates the point being made. It's like calling a plumber only after your basement is flooded, instead of fixing the leaky pipe when you first notice it. That's fascinating. And it happens more than you'd think. Tony also shared a horror story about what happens when shadow IT goes undetected for too long. Yeah, he told us. Years went by and nobody looked at our numbers. Then one day, Microsoft came knocking and we got hit with about a $180,000 fine. The director got fired and all hell broke loose. Now, we're kind of always auditing. Wait, let's back up. $180,000? That's the kind of nightmare scenario that keeps IT directors up at night. And it's not just about the money. Browser extensions can violate GDPR compliance through permissions like reading and changing all your data on websites you visit, accessing your clipboard, and managing your downloads. Plus, if an extension sends user data to servers outside the EU without proper safeguards, you're looking at potential GDPR cross-border data transfer violations. That's a whole other can of worms. So why do employees turn to these unauthorized tools in the first place? In our recent listener survey, 68% cited convenience as the primary reason. It usually starts innocently enough. You think, I'll just use this tool for one project, but then it delivers results. And suddenly, you can't imagine working without it. It's like digital quicksand, easy to step into, 
hard to get out of. And free trials are the ultimate Trojan horse. They have such a low barrier to entry that employees don't hesitate to sign up. Before you know it, critical corporate data exists in unmanaged silos. Not to mention that these free trial versions often lack advanced security features like data encryption and multi-factor authentication, which puts your data at serious risk. Now back to our shadow IT discussion. So we've identified the problem. Now let's talk solutions. There are five key strategies organizations can implement to tackle browser-based shadow IT. Solution number one, invest in a shadow IT detection tool. These tools provide visibility into your IT environment, including applications on endpoints, networks, and crucially, browsers. These tools can detect both unauthorized and authorized software and even blacklist software that you no longer want employees to access. They integrate with your existing IT ecosystem to correlate user activity, access points, and assets. Solution number two, conduct regular audits. This helps identify unlicensed software and suspicious online activity across your organization. Regular audits should include scanning endpoints and networks, identifying devices not enrolled in your IT asset management system, and flagging unapproved SaaS applications. Solution number three, streamline offboarding workflows. This is huge because shadow IT often persists even after employees leave the company. That's right. Many browser-based services keep users logged in for extended periods or rely on persistent tokens. So. Even if the user's corporate network access is cut, their browser might still have active sessions with unauthorized cloud tools. Tony mentioned this exact problem, saying, we can't stop people from installing applications, and we can't always know what they signed up for outside IT. That's why shadow IT becomes a real problem during offboarding. Solution number four, implement software asset management, or SAM. This gives you deeper visibility into software usage, including browser-based applications that might not appear on your endpoints. A good SAM tool can integrate with single sign-on providers like Azure or Okta to automatically track who accessed which software using their company logins and when. According to Gartner, a well-implemented SaaS management program can help businesses reduce their overall spending by 30%. That includes costs saved by preventing the use of unauthorized software. And finally, solution number five, implement educational policies and training. You can't eliminate shadow IT completely without bringing employees on board. Run campaigns to inform them about the implications of using apps on the browser without careful consideration. Organization-wide webinars, internal newsletters, and workshops can encourage users to refrain from using unapproved software. I'm curious, Marcus, which of these five solutions do you think gives the best bang for your buck? That's a great question. I'd say it's a tie between investing in detection tools and employee education. Technology without awareness is ineffective, and awareness without tools lacks teeth. I'd agree with that. We saw this play out with one of our consulting clients, a mid-sized financial services firm. They implemented both strategies simultaneously and saw shadow IT incidents drop by 72% in just three months. And they avoided a potential data breach that could have cost them millions in fines and reputation damage. We've got a listener question that's perfect for this topic. Sarah from Seattle asks, with my team working remotely, how can I monitor browser-based shadow IT when I can't physically see their computers? Great question, Sarah. For remote teams, I'd recommend a combination of endpoint management tools that can monitor browser extensions and cloud access security brokers that can detect unauthorized SaaS usage. And don't forget to create a frictionless process for requesting new tools. 
Many employees turn to shadow IT simply because the official channels are too slow or cumbersome. Time for our digital detective tip of the week. Mine is, take 10 minutes today to audit your own browser extensions. Delete any you haven't used in the past month and check the permissions of those you're keeping. You might be surprised at what they have access to. And my tip, create a shared document where team members can suggest tools they'd like to use. This creates transparency and gives IT visibility into the actual needs of employees, rather than forcing them to go rogue. To wrap up, browser-based shadow IT is a growing blind spot for many organizations. The convenience of browser extensions and web applications makes them easy to adopt, but difficult to track. By implementing the five solutions we discussed today, detection tools, regular audits, streamlined offboarding, software asset management, and employee education, you can significantly reduce the risks associated with shadow IT. Remember, it's not about preventing employees from using helpful tools. It's about bringing those tools into the light so they can be properly secured and managed. Next week, we're diving into the dark side of smart home devices. We'll explore how your smart thermostat, doorbell, and even your refrigerator might be compromising your privacy and security. Until then, stay vigilant and keep detecting. Thanks for listening to The Digital Detectives. Don't forget to check out our community forum where you can connect with other security conscious listeners and share your own experiences with Shadow IT. See you next week.